In this overview, we're going to discuss how to customize our menu board templates. To access the menu board templates, first you're going to need to go to your media library, the big purple area here, and click on the plus button, the add a new media button, and then go to the create from template option, which is the second option here. When I click on create from template, what it's going to do is open up my template library. And now that the template library is open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the search bar in the top left hand side and I'm going to search the word menu. So all the menus that uh, we have available pop up, uh, but in this training tutorial, I really want to focus on our newest menus, our uh, most recent menus. So we have three uh, red and black, one, two, and three menu here, as well as a menu 20 and menu 26. Uh, these all have, at least the menus one, two, and three, menu 20 have three columns, so you can have uh, three columns of, of items, uh, as well as images. And so I'm gonna click on this menu 20 uh, to add it in. I click on it, I click select, once I click select, it asks me if I want to change the name. I'll leave it saved as is typically. Click my save button. And now the menu is in the media library. Now to customize this template, what we want to do is we want to click on it. And when we click on it, it highlights the, the menu here in properties. And we can see this, uh, this menu template here is in our properties window. And I'm going to scroll down beneath the name, beneath the description, durations, tags, beneath the scheduling information, beneath the sharing information to the editable fields area. The editable fields area is where we're going to uh, customize the different columns, our left column options, our left column colors, our middle column options, our middle column colors, our right column options and our right column colors. So we have the ability to change all these within this template and so we're going to start here on the left hand side. So to do that I'm going to click on the little drop down beside left column options and when I drop it down I can see several options that I can now customize. But before we get into customizing this I just want to preview this and see how it looks by default. So I'm going to click the preview button here at the top of the properties window and it should open this uh, template up in its default setting. So we can see by default we have three images, a, middle, uh, a left image, a middle image, and a right image. We have three columns, a left column, a middle column, and a right column. And we can change the colors as well. So in this uh, left column we have an orange color, in the middle column we have a red color, and in the uh, right column we have a green color. But we can make uh, these three columns any color that we so choose. There's a lot of options that we can change here. Um, so I'm going to close this out by clicking anywhere but the preview, and it gets rid of it. And now we can go in and start customizing these different columns for our uh, custom menu. So here on the header for the left column, there's a header text and a subheader. I'm just going to go in here and write appetizers. And then I'll put here the subheader, maybe small plates. And if you notice, as I've te the text in these two uh, options here, a, a button on the right-hand side, a restore button, has popped up. And what this gives me the ability to do is if I don't like my text or if I want to restore back to its default state, I can just click on restore, and it restores the text back to its default subheader state versus uh, my customized text. So let me just write in small plates again. So we have that here. Now I, I scroll down and then we have the six items that are currently in that left hand column. So we can customize each of these with our own text and we can also add new ones if we wanted to. But first, before we add a new one, I want to focus on customizing the, the ones that are in here already. Uh, when I click on this uh, blade or this uh, first area, it breaks down the different items that I can customize. So I have an item name I can customize. I have the price that I can customize. I have a description that I can customize, and I have a calories area that I can customize. Now, in between these areas are individual little bars here. So this bar tells the, the framework, hey, to put the item in a certain area, put the place in a, or the price in a certain area, put the description in a certain area, and put the calories in a certain area. So uh, as you customize these, we're going to ask that you keep the bars in here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to change this first one from the general item name, and I want to change it to nachos. So nachos, and we're going to put a price in here. So I'm going to highlight my price, and I'm going to replace it with $5. I'm going to go to my description. Again, I'm going to highlight my description area, and I'm going to put in a description. So I'll say chili cheese and jalapenos make this a winner. Okay, so that's our description. 
And I'm gonna keep scrolling over. I'll leave the bar here and we can put in our calories. I'll highlight my calories area and I'm just gonna type in 700 for our calories. Now, if we're happy with this, I'll click the check box here on the right hand side and it saves us into this blade. Now, if I make all these changes and I don't click the save button, it's gonna go back to its default state. So just FYI, once you've added in these, your custom information here, go ahead and hit that check box on, on the right hand side. Now that we've added this in, let's just click on the, the menu board again to see how it looks now that we've started to customize it. So I click on preview. And we can see here on the right hand side, our appetizers has changed from the header, uh, our small places here in the subheader area. And we've also have our nachos. So nachos, and then beneath the nachos is the, is the description. So chili, cheese, and jalapeno make this a winner. Uh, the, the, the price is $5. And then the calorie count beneath that is 700 calories. So because we had those straight lines in the description, it broke up where to put nachos, where to put the description, where to put the price, and where to put the, the calories. So let me close this back out and I'll show you some other things we can do in here. We can create our own unique ones or our own additional ones here by adding a new one as well. Now we have to add in the bars to make sure it breaks up the different areas as well and I'll show you how to do that. So to add a new one, I'm just gonna click in the, area, the, the text area here and I can start typing. So let's say I wanted to have in uh, egg rolls or chicken wings. So we put in again our, our item first our price second, our description third, and our calories fourth. So chicken wings, I'm gonna hit my space, I'm gonna hit the, the straight up uh, bar, and then I'm gonna put a space, and I'm gonna put in the price, $6, again space, hit the bar, another space, and now I'm gonna put in the description. So hot, spicy, buffalo, oh, And then I get a space, the bar, and then I put in the calories. So 900 calories. Once I'm happy with that, I'll click the plus button here on the right hand side. And now this new item has been added here at the bottom of my list of items. Now, if I want this somewhere else in, in the grouping, what I can do is click on it and grab it and move it around wherever I'd like. So now we have nachos first, our chicken wings second. Again, let's preview and see how this worked. So I click on the preview button. And again, our chicken wings is here. So we can see again, where we put in our bar, it broke up chicken wings versus the price versus the description versus the calorie count. So this is how we're gonna customize this for your area. And now uh, we've added an additional line here. So instead of having six items, you have seven items in here. And so you can add a few more. Uh, and just know that as you add more, the text is going to uh, be dynamic and shrink down. So you can only add so many, but uh, there's still an ability to add six, seven to eight uh, items in here. So that is how we're going to customize these different columns. So I'm going to close this out. And we could add in something to each of these if we wanted to. We could get rid of these if we wanted to. We could also go back to default by clicking the restore button here on the right hand side as well. Now beneath this area is the column image position. So by default, the left hand column image is on the top. We could switch it to bottom if we wanted to and have the, the image display at the bottom. When I do that, I'll get them on a preview and we'll show uh, an update here. So now the burger image is at the bottom versus at the top, and it just moved the text to the top. Uh, the this, this same functionality is, is available in all three columns. So you could change this around uh, as you'd like, or you could put all three food images across the bottom or all three across the top. It's totally up to you. Again, let me close this out, uh, but that's where this is located in the column image position here. So let me just go back, and I'm gonna click restore so it takes it back to the, the top default like it was previously. Now beneath that area is where you have the images that you can add in for those uh, left, middle, and right food images. So again, we're, left, we're in the left column only, so we're gonna add in additional images if you wanted to here. Now to, by default, the default image, the burger image is in here. To add in your own images, you're gonna click the plus button. Now, before we do this though, we have to add these additional food images from our computer uh, into the media library. So into our media library where all of our other content is stored. To do that, I'm gonna click on the plus button. I'm gonna to go to upload a media. So it takes me to my computer and I'm going to search for some additional food images that I have here. So I have a chicken wing salad and steak image. I'm just gonna grab those and open them up. And it's gonna begin the upload process here in my media library. So there they are, my chicken wings image, a salad image, and a steak image. And so for this uh, left-hand column, I wanna put in maybe a, a chicken wing image to go along with my nachos images and, and all my other appetizers. So I'm gonna click the pink plus button here in the images. 
When I click the pink plus button, it gives me the option to choose from any of these images that I've now added into my media library. So I wanna add my chicken wings image in there. I'll select it. And now my chicken wings image is in there in addition to the burger image. So this is another great option that I can uh, have multiple food images displayed in each of these three columns. So it's gonna scroll from the default burger image to the chicken wing image and whatever other images I have in here. Now, it's gonna keep each one on the screen for 10 seconds so we can see that down here in the, the slideshow duration. The 10 means 10 seconds and we can increase that or decrease if we wanted to by clicking the up and down arrow columns over here or typing in 15 or five, whatever it may be. But by default, uh, the, the image slideshow duration is gonna be 10 seconds for each image as it scrolls through so now that we've added a couple images in, let's uh, scroll up. I'm actually gonna drop this down to five seconds for now, just so we can kind of see it quicker. I'm gonna scroll back up and let's see a preview of this now. So we should see our burger change from our wings here in just a moment. And there they go. So again, if you have multiple images of your appetizers, you can put those images in this left-hand slideshow. Same thing with your entrees or whatever you want to put in the other two columns. So I'm gonna close this back out again. And uh, that is the essentially the left-hand column customization. Again, if we want to go back to the way it is by default, we can click on this restore button here on the right-hand side. And when I click it, it takes all these items back to their default status versus uh, the ones I've customized. So that's the left-hand column. The same thing applies to the uh, right, the middle column options and the right column options. Now I wanna focus on the left column colors. So I break this down here. And in here I have all the different areas that I can change the color. So the column background, the column header, the column subheader, the item size labels, the item name, the item price, the item description, and the item calories. Each of these can be customized with different colors. And to do that, you're just gonna click in the color area here. And when you click in there, if you know the hex code colors that you want to use, you could add those in here, or you could just choose a color from our color swatches here. And the same thing applies as you go down. So as I click these other areas, you see the different color that's been selected. This is a gray. This is a lighter gray. The item name is a, a brown. The item price is the same brown. This is the dark gray, and this is a dark gray. So you can easily change the colors in this right-hand side. And if I wanted to, I could make these things any kind of colors I want. So I could click the, you know, make them uh, random colors for each of the different ones. So I'm just kind of playing around here for example purposes, of course. So I've added in quite a few different color options here. This should be quite bright and obvious. All right. And of course you see as I'm adding these different new colors in, to the right of each of these is my restore button. So uh, if I don't like what, I've, what I'm doing or if I don't like the way it's working out, I can always click my restore and take it back to its default status. So now that we've changed these colors, let's click on the, the preview button to see how this looks now. Oh yeah. A lot of stuff happening here. So you have the background color, you have the text color, you have the item name color, the price color, the calorie color, the description color, quite a bit that you can customize to make unique for your location and your brand. So I close that back out. Now let's just take this back to the default because I don't want to leave it uh, crazy like this. So easily be taken right back to the way it was before. <clears throat> And so that is how you're going to customize this, this specific menu here. So same thing, the middle column options, you have the header, the subheader, uh, all the descriptions for the items that you may have, uh, in addition to uh, the ability to add in more images, uh, change the image location, and also change the speed of the slideshow. So uh, pretty straightforward, uh, highly editable, really cool to be able to customize and make unique uh, for your location. And so uh, that is essentially this menu board. Now I wanna quickly touch on some of the others we have available as well. Uh, one of the other ones that we have is the menu 26. It's here, uh, I've already uploaded into my media library from my template library. Again, you would just search for menu uh, and look for uh, our newest menus here. Uh, this was menu 26 and it has uh, items, it looks like text on the left and then uh, images on the right. And again, this is even highly editable. So uh, I have it here in my properties window, I can click my preview button to see how it looks. Now we can see that we have our, our header and our items on the left hand side, our image here on the right hand side. And so I close this back out, I'm gonna scroll down, scroll beneath my scheduling, beneath my sharing, back to the editable fields area. And so we have the menu options 
a color options and image options uh, drop down. So I'm going to start with the menu options. I click on the drop down and it's very similar to the one that we were just in. So you have a header, a subheader that you would add in. Again, any of these brackets or bars, uh, we're, we're going to ask that you leave these in here so that it doesn't mess up the formatting. Same thing in the, in the rest of them. So you had the bars between the price and the item uh, and so forth. So as you customize these, uh, you can add in as many of these items as you'd like. If you need more uh, lines to add in additional items, you can you just double click here, add in another item, and so forth. Uh, beneath that, you have the ability to change the color options. So again, like we were doing, we can change all the different colors by clicking in the, the color area, choosing the color we want, or adding in the specific uh, code that we want to have uh, in that color area. And then beneath that we have image options. And so under image options, uh, same thing as uh, before, instead of having the images first at the top at bottom, in this menu we can have the images on the left or right. So we can change it to the left. Let me just preview again and we'll see the, the line items on the right hand side and the image on the left. So if you could use the same template in multiple, on multiple menu board screens and just alternate the, the image on the left or right so that it sits in different places. Same thing with the slideshow as with our previous template. You could add in multiple images in here to the, the image slideshow, so it's going to play all the images that you have. And you can also choose how often you want them to play or how often they change out. So again, 10 seconds by default, but you can increase that or decrease it as you choose. That's under the image options. That's the image colors. And this is the menu options. So this is the, the menu 26. It's a great uh, single line. Uh, menu boards so that it's uh, an image and then line items on either left or right hand side. All right, a couple others I want to quickly mention as well as we have uh, three of these red and black menus, red and black menu one, red and black menu two, and red and black menu three. The, 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 four, the coloring is, is going to be the same for all three of these. Uh, the, the placement is what makes these different. So in red and black menu one, I'm just going to preview it and we can see how it looks here by default. You can see you have um, uh, two headers on the left, uh, two headers in the middle, and then one header on the right-hand side. And so here you can go in and start customizing these, adding in additional items, uh, the same kind of way we built on the last one. So I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to scroll down. Again, my, field, my editable fields area, we have left column, middle column, and right column. So I click on my left column. And again, it breaks down the same way that we had before. Our header is in the top. We can customize that. We can say, again, appetizers or um, I'm going to type in snacks. So I have snacks. Now I just click my checkbox. Now it saves it into this uh, area. So uh, I can customize these different areas the same kind of way. Uh, with adding in my custom information in my item, my price, my description, and uh, this may not have calorie counts actually. But there you have this uh, breakdown here. Same thing with the middle column. You can customize these different headers as well as the menu options. Add in new items if you'd like. And the same thing with the right column. And so each of these can be customized to be unique for your location. Unfortunately, with these, the colors are not, uh, are not editable. Uh, these are designed to be red and black. And so if this works for you, obviously this is going to be a, a great fit because it's so highly customizable. Okay, that is it for the menu board overview.